Hi everyone, and uh, I hope you enjoyed Hedgehog Week. I've been sent lots of amazing pictures of the hedgehog houses and hog highways that you've been uh, putting in your gardens, which is totally brilliant. And hopefully you can send me some pictures if you find any hedgehogs using them. I've actually found some hedgehog poo in my garden this week, which I was really excited about. So they are back. I haven't spotted a hog yet, but I'll be out in the evenings this week trying to see if I can find him or her lurking around in my garden. But this week we're going to be uh, moving on to talk about ponds and pond life. So the number one thing you can do for wildlife is to put a pond or some kind of water in your garden because all wildlife needs water. Birds need water, bats need water, amphibians need water, we're going to talk about those in a little bit, and, and bugs need water, things like dragonflies, so if you put some water in your garden you'll probably see a lot more wildlife around. It's the number one thing you can do. So today I'm going to talk about how you might want to think about making a pond but I'm first of all going to show you how to go about looking in a pond and seeing what wildlife you can find. So I'm really lucky in my garden I've already made two ponds by the end of today I'm going to make four ponds uh, but the two ponds I've got already have got quite a lot of uh, bugs and wildlife in them already so I can show you a few bits and bobs that are already in my pot. So if you don't have a garden or if you don't have a pond in your garden don't worry you can still go and have a look in ponds and um, all you need to do is have a look on a map and you can do this online as well I'll send the link round um, and you can just find out where your nearest pond is it might be in a park it might be down your road somewhere it might be in the countryside um, it might be in a woodland uh, and you can just go and have a little look in that pond it's a perfect time of year to do it in the spring uh, you can either if you're lucky enough to have a net you can use uh, a net and if you don't have a net Richard doesn't know I, I did this but you can um, use a sieve from your kitchen and um, use it to, to see what you can get out of your pond. This is an old one, but I'm still not going to use it today because I think he'd be a bit angry with me. So I'm going to use my net and you can get a little box so you can see what you can find in your pond. So this is my pond that I made about three years ago and you can just sweep the net and see what you can catch. So this is what I found from my net in the pond. At first, it doesn't look like there's very much in there at all, but if you look right in there, you can see it's lots of things moving around. It's just full of life, uh, which shows that my pond's really good for wildlife. If you see here, this is, this is actually a, a little uh, worm that lives in my pond. This is a snail, so that's a water snail. And then there's a different type of snail there. Oh, I think that's an old shell, actually. And then if you look right in there there's all sorts of little water bugs so there's something there we go there's one of them there's something called water shrimp which are swimming around and then these guys here are called water boatmen or they're also known as back swimmers because like this one over here or that one there they like swimming on their back now these guys will give you a little bit of a nip won't hurt you properly but it might give you a bit of a surprise if you pick them up and squeeze them so i'm not going to do that but they are pretty cool. So I've got lots of them in my pond, which shows that my pond has got lots of life in it. So we have a few different types of amphibians uh, in the UK. So see if you can go out and spot any. Even if you don't have a pond in your garden, uh, you can go out and about. So if you've got a park nearby and you've got anything like this, so any logs lying around or you see any bricks or anything like that, that's a really good place for them to hide. So you can have a little look underneath. So there's lots of bugs, there's some worms under there, some centipedes, but no amphibians today. We've only ever found one toad and one what's called a smooth newt in our garden. But see if you can be luckier and see what you can find in yours. Um, you might be able to find a common frog or a common toad. Uh, I'm going to put up a bit of a spot the difference and you can see if you can work out what the difference is between the two. The common frog is um, a really good tip. It's, it's got a bit of a black patch behind its eyes, so a bit of a dark patch. And toads tend to be a bit watier as well, so that's how you can tell the difference between those two. There's also three different things.
this little beastie here, which looks like a dinosaur, and that is the Great Crested Newt. And these newts are quite rare now. In fact, most amphibians, because people haven't been making ponds anymore, they've been filling in ponds, most amphibians really need our help, and these guys do. So uh, these, these guys actually sometimes live in villages or towns, uh, even cities. So you might have these really close to you and just not know about it. So if you see one of these, you're really, really lucky because these newts are really special. So just go out and have a look and see if you can find any amphibians. Um, and let me know if you manage to spot any. So if you want to make your own water feature for wildlife, whether it's a pond or whether it's a mini pond or a pond in a pot, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've already made two ponds. This one here I made three years ago. And to do this, you can just about sit here, you can use a black plastic liner. All the plants in there have been given to me by different people, uh, so I'm really lucky, but you can buy them from a garden centre. You need to be a little bit careful that there's not any nasty bugs or plants that come in with it. Um, but you, you, can, you can buy plants and put them in. And then this pond over here is a new pond, and it's quite amazing really, because I can already see that there's water snails in there, and there's bugs in there already. Um, so it's already full of life, and I've put those plants in there. You can um, put them in little plant pots like that one that Iris is growing. And this pond is about uh, perfect, the perfect depth for wildlife. So if you want to know how deep to make your pond, a quite a good rule is actually about as deep as an adult welly. And uh, probably the, the deepest you want it, I'm trying to fall over, is maybe two adult wellies deep. So if you look at this pond, it hasn't filled up yet. But um, that's how deep it is. So it's, it's just almost as deep as my willy, and when it fills up properly, it will be. And then, actually, a really good thing to have in ponds, wildlife ponds, is if you have uh, a little shelf where you can grow plants that's slightly less deep. So you can see that, that the shelf is up to there, and then the main pond is up to there on my willy. The other thing about wildlife ponds, which is really important, is if you can, don't put fish in them fish eat um, baby toads and baby frogs which are called tadpoles and they also eat uh, baby newts so if you can avoid it uh, don't put any fish in there and now I'm just going to show you a couple of other ways that you might want to make little mini ponds you might be thinking well I don't have a very big garden or maybe you don't even have a garden at all uh, so there are still things you can do to make some water in your garden that will help wildlife so come with me don't trip over it So you can use pretty much anything to make a pond, as long as it doesn't have a leak or a hole. So this is actually a really disgusting old washing up bowl that we've had lying around for a while, so I've been wanting to get rid of it. So I've dug a hole in my flower bed, and I'm going to now show you how to make a pond. So that is my super quick pond and obviously I will make that more beautiful, plant some things around it, um, maybe make a couple of other places for animals to hide and put some more plants um, and then in a few weeks I'll send a pitch around and you'll be able to see what that looks like as the summer goes on. If 
you still don't have enough space for a pond like that, but you do have a front door or a back door, this is a really simple pond and a pot idea that you can also do. So this is one of our old car pots um, that doesn't have a hole in the bottom. Make sure the hole in the bottom was filled in. But you could use something like this old bin, which to make it look a bit nicer, you could cover in a scarf or something like that. And then, come here Rich, if you look in the pot, it's got some gravel in the bottom of it. That um, is just there to give insects and things like that, pond life, some places to hide. And then you can fill it up with water. And your water, you can just actually let it fill up with rain. And it is due to rain next week, so it's a good time to just leave it and let it fill up with rainwater. But if you've got a water butt, like I do, or if you've got some buckets, you can leave outside when it rains. And you can um, fill up your pond in a pot. And then when you've filled it where you want to, and the good trick with this is to move your pot to where you want it before you fill it up with water, otherwise it'll be really, really heavy. You can then put some plants in it. You can just wait and see if anything finds it, but you can also put your own plants in. So I'm going to put an iris that I was growing in one of my other ponds and make sure you put enough weight in the pot to keep it down. And then I'm just going to chuck some other plants. So a little bit of this one, which I think is Creeping Jenny, and a little bit of this pond weed in. And I'm also going to put a few more iris bulbs in if I can get them to grow. I might put another pot in there in a little bit. Um, Ta-da! There we go. And then these are so that amphibians can get in and out and you don't have to use these but if you want frogs or toads in here they can hop but you can help things like newts find their way in by making a little ramp for them. <laughs> 